with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the feast of the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. By himself he knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered 200 denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a small boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as 5,000 men sat down. And then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. He then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as was wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, pick up the pieces left over, so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. People, seeing this sign that he had given, said, this really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him a king, escaped back to the hills by himself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. A large crowd came uh, uh, looking for Jesus. Um, and why do we come to Mass? Uh, for different reasons. But everyone that loves the Mass, who loves the Mass, comes because they're seeking Jesus. They're seeking something from the Lord Jesus. A sense that in Jesus is the answer. So I think of that crowd coming to Jesus. It's like the people coming to us on Sunday. Uh, from all walks of life, from all levels of faith, we come to Jesus. It's something of the essence of Christianity. And Jesus, it says there that Jesus uh, climbed uh, the hillside. The original Greek says Jesus climbed, went up the mountain, as they. Now, <clears throat> that's probably important because the mountain represents, you know, in ancient times, in the Bible, in Bible times, the mountain represented a meeting place uh, between God and people. That's Mount Sinai, is where they met God and got the Ten Commandments. Mount Tabor, where Jesus was transfigured and transformed in their sight. And Mount Calvary, where Jesus was sacrificed. So you see, at Mass, we are symbolically, uh, it all come uh, 
up the mountain. We've come to the meeting place with God. There's the, the, the law, the Ten Commandments, and the Bible. Christ is transfigured and came. Uh, uh, all these things was emblematic of what happens at Mass. This meeting with God. Above all, it's the Mount Calvary where the sacrifice of Christ on the cross is being presented. Um, so it's always important, you know, I think, to make that effort to come to Mass. Uh, that's why I don't like people to say, I went to Mass on TV. It means they stayed home and turned on the telly. I guess it's better than nothing. And, and often during COVID, we couldn't do much else. <laughs> but no more. No, I'm not that. Uh, and then the Bible says he, he sat down. Now, in, in the ancient world, the, the position of a teacher, <coughs> the teacher that a, a teacher adopted, was sitting down. I think in, with us, I think a, a teacher stands up at the blackboard watch the kids. But in ancient times the teachers sat down. Uh, so then you see uh, part of the purpose of coming to Mass and being Christians is to listen to Jesus, listen to his teachings uh, and uh, put them into practice. Then there's Jesus said, how can we feed this crowd? Now, uh, the Mass is also about feeding the people, not physically, but spiritually. You know, we live in a wonderful modern world in which governments and people have, uh, with authority have done much to feed the world physically. Um, there's still much remains to be done. Uh, great improvements have taken place. And we praise uh, God for that and for the, and the people who have brought that about. But I fear in feeding the world physically, uh, and as a society or culture, we have neglected the spiritual feeding of people. And uh, thus we get, and as they say among the young ones especially, an increase in anxiety depression, even suicide. Yeah. So um, I fear that our modern culture and society neglects the spiritual feeding. And so Jesus is saying, how can we feed this crowd? Uh, uh, Christianity is always hands say We get fed spiritually by getting God into our lives. And it's done by coming to Mass. <laughs> it's one way of doing it. An important way. By reading the Bible, by listening to the sermon. Oh, I have very, very dull sermons, uh, but I do my best. And God sometimes can say a word through me. Isn't that true, man? And um, by meditating on the Word of God. Today, the young ones go around looking at screens all the time. And that, that sadly increases their anxiety and depression. <coughs> if we could help them, perhaps praying, doing a bit of prayer, reading the Bible. Anyway, the, the apostles then says this, they said, how, how are we going to feed them? Well, we've got here, there's a, a bloke here with five fish and two loaves. What's that among this great crowd? <laughs> you know, it's a basic gospel principle. It doesn't matter. God can make the little into much. Take the little you have and give it to God. 
and that little will be elevated and transformed into the feeding of the world. Uh, that this physical feeding of, uh, of the crowds is emblematic of the spiritual feeding of the soul. That happens at Mass as a consequence uh, of, um, of uh, a spiritual feeding uh, of a wider, con of wider context of society and the world. The spiritual feeding can go out to the world by you being fed with the Word of God and in sharing it with others. I was supposed to sum it up, you know, the message is keep God in the picture, keep God in your lives. Parents, that's important. It's hard to get the young ones today to listen to us. But if they see you are a man and woman of God, uh, something the spiritual food of Christ will get into their hearts and minds. And the last uh, detail I'll pick out from this gospel story is um, when it was all over, everybody got fed. And then he sent them around to pick up the pieces, the fragments the scraps and they fill the baskets full of them you see. It's, uh, it shows us I suppose the, uh, it's a further confirmation of the miracle there was so much left over so how great that miracle was and um, the, uh, there's also a lesson here it's uh, uh, to clean up after us I suppose <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, look after our environment and the world in which we live. Uh, use the good things in the world, but make sure we leave it in as good a condition as we found it. And that is an important uh, message in today's world. But it also I'd like to draw some other messages from this uh, that um, the. Um, all of us, you see, we stand on the shoulders of great ones, the great saints of the past, and, and our parents, people of faith, and our teachers and so on. And they've uh, fed us. Now it's up to us now to take the scraps that we've still got and spread them around the world. And one of the challenges today is to create new new ways of new ways of teaching the people um, uh, that, that um, what they make <coughs> the scraps are really really the seed of new life in Christ. <coughs> we have here in uh, in St Gerard's Chapel um, the wonderful work of Mr Andrew Fakara who is this, uh, he started up this funny organisation called God and Beer, a great unusual, if unusual, combination. And uh, he, he has this meeting, calls everybody to this meeting. At, um, what's the name of the place? Notting Hill Hotel. Oh yeah, Notting Hill Pub. That's right, Notting Hill Pub. Uh, where you can buy a meal. And uh, even get a glass of beer, <laughs> and uh, and then he he invites um, uh, talkers, uh, speakers, uh, to come along and speak to us about the faith. Uh, it's a wonderful initiative um, uh, in uh, in our Aussie world today. Help us, Lord, to find new ways of turning the scraps of faith into a bright, burning faith in Jesus. Another view of the scraps, I think, uh, is um, a personal one. I like to see the scraps as a, a message for an old bloke like me. I don't know if I've done much to serve the Lord over the years. And it's, Look back now, and it's all I'm left with is a few scraps. 
what much to shine for. <laughs> Some wonderful friends. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, the big scraps there, the important scraps. But as for uh, my efforts, I think they're pretty meagre. Yeah, but God says, gather the scraps of your life, and God gathers them and takes them, and will turn them to the fruit of eternal life. It's a beautiful hopeful message for me that our God is interested in the scraps. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.